Two and a half million Europeans suffer what's known as a traumatic brain injury every year. And how well they recover depends on how they're treated, but also where. Doctors meeting here at the University of Antwerp think that needs to change, that everyone has the right to the best individualised care. Let's find out more. Bart suffered a traumatic brain injury when he had a car crash in March 2015. His story highlights the complexity of the disease and the challenges in treating it. While the physical injuries to his lower body were treated, the emergency room didn't detect his brain injury, and he only became aware of the problem when people around him said his behaviour had changed. Bart's case was followed by brain injury expert Professor Andrew Maas. I was always very quickly agitated, even on the border of getting angry very soon and very quickly, and I was not who I was. But I initially didn't want to believe it until the physician uh, told me that it was quite normal and it happened more often than, than people in general think. Thankfully, he got appropriate care and treatment and he made a full recovery. But other patients who do not get that care, those symptoms may get worse. <laughs> Cases like Bart's will be studied by specialists from across Europe who are uniting under an EU project called Centre TBI. The experts meeting here at the University of Antwerp agree that urgent action is needed. And we've had no new treatments for traumatic brain injury in the last 40 years. So we really needed to get together as researchers across the continent to study this pathology and really get a better understanding of what's driving this huge burden of death and disability for our patients. The Centre TBI project team is studying 4,500 traumatic brain injury patients in 19 countries. The scope is broad as the experts examine patients of different ages, contrast urban and rural healthcare, compare emergency responses and evaluate how patients are followed months after injury. It comes as the perception of traumatic brain injury changes. It's now seen as a chronic disease with a high cost to society. It's a huge problem for the individual, it's a huge problem for their families because these are patients who don't just have an inability to move an arm or a leg, they may have a trouble with thinking, understanding, communicating, reintegrating into society. It's a problem for society and for global society because one in every $200 that the world makes is spent on the care or the consequences of traumatic brain injury. A promising approach is to use magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, to help spot injuries earlier and give doctors fine detail on how brain tissue is damaged. It's expensive and complex and isn't part of current traumatic brain injury diagnosis, but it could make a big difference. CT imaging is good for detecting bleedings or detecting bone, but the tissue contrast with MRI is much, much better. Smarter deployment of MRI is just one advance the researchers are aiming for, but the big one is in the organisation of care. Probably the greatest step forward I think we may be able to make is in the healthcare management and in the strategy of treatment. Bart was given drugs and psychological help to recover. He'll continue to assist the Centre TBI doctors who released their conclusions in April 2020. Thank <laughs> you.